Good morning. Welcome to worship here at Woodlawn Lutheran Church. It's great to be with you here in God's house. So we join together and offer our thanks and praise to God through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Special welcome to all our guests and visitors. Glad you could join us for our worship today. At some point during the service, we ask all of our worshipers to please sign the friendship registers that are located on the center aisle of each pew. This is the third weekend of the season of Advent in which we prepare our hearts and minds for the coming of our Savior Jesus Christ, uh, the celebration of his birth in Bethlehem, but also his promise to come again in glory. A uh, number of special things in this service. We've got the baptism of Charles um, at the beginning of the service, and then we also have a new member welcoming later in the service for those who have joined our congregation in the last year. In addition to that, you may notice something a little different. In the pews in front of you, we've got these brand new blue hymnals. Um, we don't have the graphics yet for printing out the new orders of service in our printed worship guide, but we are going to start using the hymns from the new hymn books. Uh, maybe if you just want to take a brief look at it, um, I'm just going to say that there are kind of three main sections. In the front part of the hymn book, we've got a section of psalms that are used in connection with our worship services all the way up to Psalm 150. The next section, starting on page 151, is all the different orders of service that we use in connection with our worship here at Woodlawn. And then we've got the hymn section. And the hymns actually start with hymn number 301, which might sound a little unusual, but the idea behind that is so that there's no confusion between a hymn number and a page number. So uh, they started with 301 and they continue on from there. We are going to be singing a number of hymns from this hymnal today. Hopefully some of the melodies are familiar to you. Uh, a lot of the hymns have carried over from the red hymnal into the blue hymnal, or at least a lot of the melodies have carried over. So hopefully they're easy to follow along with. We rejoice today in the Lord's coming. That's the focus of our service. The theme of our service is to rejoice with humble faith and trust in God and his promises. We open our service with, with hymn number 306. Um, if you don't have one of these baptism inserts, um, this is what we're going to use for our baptism order of service. It will be on the, the screen as well. Otherwise, these inserts are on the table in the entryway. Hymn 306, lift up your heads, you mighty gates. Christ the ruler is God. 
We continue then with the service of holy baptism. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you. Our Savior Jesus Christ commanded baptism when he said, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. All of us are born into this world with a deep need for baptism. From our parents, we inherit a sinful nature. We are without true fear of God and true faith in God, and we are condemned to eternal death. But Jesus took away our sin by giving his life on the cross. At our baptisms, he clothes us with the robe of his righteousness, and he gives us a new life. Our sinful nature need not control us any longer. We recall what baptism means for our daily lives as we speak these words. Baptism means that the sinful nature in us should be drowned by daily sorrow and repentance and that all its evil deeds and desires be put to death. It also means that a new person should daily arise to live before God in righteousness and purity forever. As baptized children of God, we confess our sins. Holy and merciful Father, I confess that I am by nature sinful and that I have disobeyed you in my thoughts, words, and actions. I have done what is evil and failed to do what is good. For this I deserve your punishment both now and in eternity. But I am truly sorry for my sins and trusting in my Savior, Jesus Christ, I pray. Lord, have mercy on me, a sinner. God, our Heavenly Father, has been merciful to us and has given his only Son to be the atoning sacrifice for our sins. Therefore, as a called servant of Christ and by his authority, I forgive you all your sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. Dear parents, in obedience to the command of our Lord Jesus Christ and trusting in his promise, you have brought your son to be baptized. Jesus told us, let the little children come to me and do not hinder them, for the kingdom of God belongs to such as these. It is in baptism that God grants the new life of forgiveness, joy, and peace to little children. By the power of God's word, this gracious water of life washes away sin delivers from death and the devil, and gives eternal salvation to all who believe. Charles, receive the sign of the cross on your head and on your heart to mark you as a redeemed child of Christ. Okay. Charles James Flanders, I baptize you in the name of the Father and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit has forgiven all your sins. By your baptism, you are born again and made a dear child of your Father in heaven. May God strengthen you to live in your baptismal grace all the days of your life. Peace be with you. Amen. Congregation, please stand. Brothers and sisters in Christ, our Lord Jesus commands that we teach his precious truths to all who have been baptized. Christian love therefore urges all of us, especially parents and sponsors, to assist in whatever manner possible so that Charles may remain a child of God until death. If you are willing to carry out this responsibility, then answer yes, as God gives me strength. Yes, as God gives me strength. Merciful Father in heaven, we thank you for the blessing of baptism. 
by which you offer and grant the forgiveness of sins, life, and salvation. Help us to regard our baptisms as the robe of righteousness we are to wear all the days of our lives. Look with special favor on Charles and grant him a rich measure of your spirit that he may grow in faith and in godly living. Make us all willing to carry out our responsibilities to those who have been baptized so that all of us may finally come to the blessed joys of heaven through Jesus our Lord. Amen. We continue with our song of praise. In the peace of forgiveness, let us praise the Lord. Glory be to God on high, and on earth peace, good will toward men. We praise you, we bless you, we worship you, we glorify you, we give thanks to you for your great glory. O Lord God, heavenly King, God the Father Almighty, O Lord, the only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, O Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sin of the world, receive our prayer. You sit at the right hand of God the Father, have mercy on us. For you only are holy, you only are the Lord. You only, O Christ, with the Holy Spirit, are most high in the glory of God the Father. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray together the prayer of the day. Hear our prayers, Lord Jesus Christ, and come with the good news of your mighty deliverance. Drive the darkness from our hearts and fill us with your light. For you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated. Today we light three Advent candles. Remembering Jesus, the light of the world. He came to defeat the prince of darkness. We hear his call to see the light. Come, Lord Jesus, be our guest. Our first lesson for today from the Old Testament, the book of the prophet Zephaniah. We're encouraged here to rejoice and be glad because the Lord is our Savior. Sing out, daughter of Zion. Shout aloud, Israel. Be glad and rejoice with all your heart daughter of Jerusalem. The Lord has removed the judgment against you. He has turned back your enemy. Israel's king, the Lord, is in your midst. You no longer need to fear disaster. In that day, Jerusalem will be told, do not be afraid, O Zion. Do not give up. The Lord your God is with you as a hero who will save you. He takes great delight in you. He will quiet you with his love. He will rejoice over you with singing. This is God's word. Our psalm is Psalm 130. I invite you to sing the second part of each psalm verse, the refrains, and the glory be to the Father.
Remember your mercy all night. Remember your mercy and love. Out of the depths I cry to you, O Lord. Let your ears be attentive. If you, O oh Lord, kept a record of sins, but with you there is forgiveness, remember your mercy, O oh Lord. Remember your mercy and love. I wait for the Lord, and in his word I put my hope. O oh Israel, put your hope in the Lord. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Remember your mercy, O Lord. Remember your mercy and love. Second lesson for today is the focus of our sermon from Paul's letter to the Philippians, chapter 4. Rejoice in the Lord always. I will say it again. Rejoice. Let your gentleness be known to everyone. The Lord is near. Do not worry about anything, but in everything, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. This is God's word. Alleluia. I will send my messenger ahead of you, who will prepare your way before you. Alleluia. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. Please stand for the gospel. The gospel for today recorded in the Gospel of Luke, chapter 3, verses 7 through 18. Glory be to you. O Lord. We hear about the ministry of John the Baptist. So John kept saying to the crowds who came out to be baptized by him, You offspring of vipers, who warned you to flee from the coming wrath? Therefore produce fruits in keeping with repentance. Do not even think of saying to yourselves, We have Abraham as our father. Because I tell you that God is able to raise up children for Abraham from these stones. Even now the axe is ready to strike the root of the trees. So every tree that does not produce good fruit is going to be cut down and thrown into the fire. The crowds began to ask him, what should we do then? He answered them, whoever has two shirts should share with the person who has none. And whoever has food should do the same. Tax collectors also came to be baptized. They said, Teacher, what should we do? To them he said, Collect no more than what you were authorized to. Soldiers were also asking him, And what should we do? He told them, Do not extort money from anyone by force or false accusation 
Be satisfied with your wages. The people were waiting expectantly and were all wondering in their hearts if John might be the Christ. John answered them all, I baptize you with water, but someone mightier than I is coming. I am not worthy to untie the strap of his sandals. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and fire. His winnowing shovel is in his hand, and he will thoroughly clean out his threshing floor. He will gather the wheat into his barn, but he will burn up the chaff with unquenchable fire. Then with many other words he appealed to them and was preaching good news to the people. This is the gospel of our Lord. Praise be to you, O Christ. We join together in the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became fully human. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who in unity with the Father and the Son is worshiped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Please be seated for our next hymn. It's hymn 324 in your blue hymn books. O Lord, how shall I meet you?
This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Amen. Again, we focus our attention on God's word from Philippians chapter 4. This time of year in the Christian church year calendar is the season of Advent. Advent means coming. It's a time of preparation for the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ, the celebration of the Son of God being born in Bethlehem of the Virgin Mary, but also the anticipation that he will come again one day as he promises. And during the season of Advent, especially as we read the the gospel accounts, we hear a lot about a guy named John, John known as John the Baptist. John was a miracle baby. He was born to an older couple named Zechariah and Elizabeth, an older couple who had never been able to have children. And even before he was conceived, God had a very special job planned for John. And we kind of have a snapshot of that work of John in our gospel for today. John was a man who attracted a lot of attention. First of all, it was the way he looked. He didn't wear nice clothes. He didn't even wear what we would call normal clothes that were common in his day. He covered his body with clothing made out of camel hair. He lived out in the desert, so his skin was probably pretty weather-beaten. It's possible that he lived under a lifelong Nazarite vow like Samson so many centuries earlier, so it's possible that John never, ever had his hair cut. You get the impression that maybe under normal circumstances, John was the kind of guy that people would probably avoid, not really have anything to do with except maybe out of some curiosity about the way he looked. But John had something important to say. He had a message that compelled people to approach him and to find out even more. John told people to repent of their sins and prepare the way for the coming of the Lord. Those who believed his words came to him, and he reassured them that they were forgiven of all their sins by baptizing them in the name of, in the, name of the coming Savior, baptizing them in the waters of the Jordan River. John's job was really to get people ready, get people ready for the Savior's coming. The Apostle Paul writes in Philippians chapter 4, verse 5, that the Lord is near. So Paul is essentially saying the same thing that John the Baptist proclaimed, that the Lord is near. Not far away, but close by. In modern day, we might use our smartphone to figure out where someone is. It's amazing what you can do with the apps these days. You can track where someone is. If a family member is coming from another part of the country, you can see exactly where the airline is traveling, how long it's going to take them before they land at the airport. You can do the same thing with a person who's coming to your house or coming to church or your place of work. You can track them using GPS, Global Positioning System. The satellites help us pinpoint exact locations of where people are on the planet certainly can be very useful technology in a lot of situations. could also be a little scary. If someone has an evil purpose in mind, they could use that information for some very bad things. Just saw a story on the news the other day about people using Apple trackers to tag vehicles that they want to steal, and then they track the vehicle down, and, and then they steal it. Of course, John and Paul did not have smartphones, but they had something more, por- more powerful, more important. They had promises from God through the Holy Spirit. And this is one of those promises from God, that the Lord is near. He's not far away, but he's close by. Now in one sense, that's a reminder that the Lord is present with us at all times, and he is here with us now. He is here to bless us through the preaching and teaching of his word. He's here to bless us through our baptism, 
that washing of rebirth and renewal by the Holy Spirit. He's here to bless us through his very presence in the sacrament, his body and blood with the bread and wine in the Lord's Supper. Our powerful and loving Lord Jesus does not keep himself distant from us. He is not far away from the problems and the struggles that we have in life, but he is near. He's at hand every single day of our lives to bless us. Even now, we as his people get to enjoy the blessing of living as people in his kingdom. But the Lord is near in another sense as well. He's near as he makes his journey back to this world. His plan to return to us in a visible way for everybody to see him. Jesus once compared it to a business owner who goes away on a business trip for an undetermined amount of time, but he promises to come back. The Lord is near. He's coming. So be ready. We don't want to be caught neglecting the business that he gives us to take care of. So how can we be ready? How can we prepare as we look forward to his coming? Which is more important for us, to repent or to rejoice? Now, if you're a little familiar with the definition of those words, repent and rejoice, we might think those are kind of opposites. Things that don't belong in the same room to re- get together. We might picture repentance as something that could be pictured with a sad face. Why would that be? Well, because part of repentance is, is what we call contrition, being filled with great sadness when we realize day after day that we sin against God. We do disobey his commands and we fail to serve him the way he wants us to. There's so many good things God wants us to do in our lives. To serve and honor him, to, to benefit other people in our lives. But we don't take advantage of all those opportunities. And it's not just because we don't have enough hours in the day. Sometimes it's because we're stubborn. We don't feel like it. Sometimes we're more concerned about ourselves than we are about other people. Sometimes we don't make God's commands a high priority in our lives. On the flip side, we can be very attracted to those things which make us feel good, which satisfy us, even if they only last for a few moments. We can get so emotionally involved in all kinds of different things in life, become obsessive about every detail, and get discouraged when things don't go our way. That's our sinful nature. That selfish nature that we have that messes up our lives and certainly hurts other people. That should make us sad when we sin. We should feel guilty. But we also rejoice. We can put on a happy face when we see the love and the forgiveness that God continues to shower on us day after day. So repent and rejoice really are not opposites. Repentance begins with sadness, but it doesn't stop there. Repentance means seeing our sin in all its ugliness, but it also means seeing that the problem is not ours to fix. We can't fix ourselves. We can't fix our sinful natures. Only God can help us. Only God can save us. In many ways, that's a foreign concept for people. We focus so much on working hard and being responsible. We want people to learn from their mistakes and make better decisions in life. But that doesn't work when we're trying to repair our broken relationship with God. We simply have to accept the fact that we're lost and simply trust that God is the only one who can save us through Jesus Christ. That's repentance. And it's a blessing given to us by the Holy Spirit. When we repent, then we can rejoice in the Lord every day at all times. Repentance gives us a a whole new perspective on our lives. We let go and we trust God and his word to guide our thoughts, to guide our priorities. Proverbs 9 verse 10 says, The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom, and the knowledge of the Holy One is understanding. 
In the gospel for today, John the Baptist gave guidance to some of those who were baptized, some of those who were blessed by that powerful message of God's forgiveness. They were looking to produce fruits of faith in their life that come from a living trust in God and his mercy. Since these people knew God had forgiven them, they, they had this desire to, to live in a way that pleased God, to, to do their jobs in a way that pleased God. Paul talks about the same sort of thing in Philippians 4, living our life in a way that pleases God since we know that he has already forgiven all our sins. And it starts with our focus on Jesus Christ, our Savior. He talks about how our life is lived in connection with Jesus Christ. He also emphasizes our attitude toward other people in our lives and helps us wrestle with some of our own personal challenges to our faith. Jesus first, others next, and yourself third. J-O-Y. The promise of God is that his peace guards our hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. That's really where it all starts, with Jesus Christ who saved us, who died for our sins. As we daily repent of our sins, the work he did to save us gives us that sure and certain promise of forgiveness and eternal life. It's an unchangeable truth that guards and keeps our hearts and minds. It gives us peace from God so that we can rejoice in the Lord no matter how we're feeling physically, emotionally, No matter how things are going at our job, no matter how safe our neighborhood is, no matter how stable our economy is, it's that peace that no one can rob from us because it's grounded in something that's already been accomplished. The payment Jesus Christ made to free us from God's punishment, his death on the cross and his resurrection from the grave. Might not always put a big smile on our face, but it goes above and beyond our logical understanding. It's a supernatural peace. The security that Christians have in Christ Jesus means we can find joy in the unfailing mercy of God no matter what our circumstances are. Now secure in Jesus Christ, Paul says, let your gentleness be evident to all people. That's challenging. People can be unpredictable. Sometimes people can even be scary. We don't always know what people are thinking, what they're planning. But God doesn't want us to be afraid of people. We shouldn't be defensive when we interact with people. We shouldn't be aggressive when we interact with people. The the default position Paul highlights here is gentleness. And gentleness doesn't mean weakness. It means you do what you can to have a good relationship with other people. You focus on how you can get along with other people. Instead of focusing on yourself, gentleness takes into consideration what other people are dealing with in life and what you can do to be the person that they need in their life right now. The reason we don't have to be overly concerned about our own needs is because of the security we have through the incredible love of our Savior. That joy and that peace and that confidence we have from God in connection with Jesus Christ is what we want to reflect to other people in our lives. And the attitude that underlies all of these things is that of thanksgiving to God, appreciating God's blessings. Blessings he gives for our temporary life here on earth, but blessings he gives that last forever including our life with him in heaven. That's at the heart of who we are, thanksgiving to God. We thank God for for not leaving us out in the cold, leaving us hopeless, condemned people, but instead forgiving all our sins and inviting us to sit at his banquet table forever because we have joy and security and peace and thanksgiving from God through Jesus Christ Paul says, don't worry about anything. Don't worry about anything. Everything we might worry about, he tells us, we should bring to God with a heart of thanksgiving, implying implying that there is no comparison between what we have to be thankful for 
and what we have to worry about. I mean, he's not trying to dismiss or belittle anything that you're struggling with. You have real problems that you're dealing with. You have difficult situations you may be involved in. And they probably make you anxious and stressed out and exhausted. But might some of these worries lose their intensity when you remember that God loves you and forgives you no matter what happens in your life? Might these worries not seem as great when you remember that God accepts you as his children and promises to carry you to your eternal home, that home your Savior Jesus has prepared for you? Each day certainly has plenty of troubles. Troubles we've got to fight through and manage. But Jesus says, you're valuable to God. He will provide for you. So keep God's will and his kingdom as first priority in your life and trust that he will help guide you through those troubles. Start and end your day with prayer and petition, reading from God's word to help you focus on the most important issues in your life. When you know God is ready to listen and respond to your prayers, when you realize that nothing is bigger than God's love for you, the Holy Spirit will fill you with peace and he will guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. The Lord is near, but we don't know how soon he's going to arrive. In the meantime, we prepare. We prepare for his coming every day. Take a look at your values and priorities. What's important? What do you spend your time and energy on? When our lives don't match what God says is most important for us, we need repentance through the Holy Spirit. Confess your sins to God and believe the good news that Jesus Christ took care of that. He paid for your sins. And then rejoice and be gentle with others. Talk to your God who loves you and cares about what's going on in your life. And the peace of God which surpasses all understanding will guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Amen. Please stand. We continue with the song, Create in Me. Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. Cast me not away from your presence, and take not your Holy Spirit from me. Restore unto me the joy of your salvation and uphold me with your free spirit. Amen. Congregation, please be seated. We continue with our new member welcoming ceremony, welcoming those who have joined our congregation in the last year. So we've got Nicole Domnitz, Mirella, Nola, and Emmy. Bill Hansen, Tony, Lisa, and AJ Tamez. You can all come over here. And Mike and Mackenzie and Madison McKean. Just want to stand right there. Just come up to the communion rail, please. It's everybody, right? Okay. Brothers and sisters in Christ, we welcome you into our family of faith with joy in the spirit of friendship and in thanksgiving to God for your presence among us. Your readiness to join Woodlawn Lutheran is an occasion for remembering what God has said concerning membership in his family, in our family. We read from Ephesians chapter 2. Consequently, you are no longer foreigners and aliens, but fellow citizens with God's people and members of God's household, built on the foundation of the apostles and the prophets, with Christ Jesus himself as the chief cornerstone. In him, the whole building is joined together 
and rises to become a holy temple in the Lord. And in him, you too are being built together to become a dwelling in which God lives by his spirit. As part of Woodlawn's family of faith, the Lord has promised to provide you with many blessings. The weekly opportunity to worship him, to praise and thank him for his many daily benefits. The privilege of partaking often of Holy Communion for the strengthening of your faith and the added assurance that your sins are paid for and forgiven for Jesus' sake. The joy of growing in faith through the regular and diligent study of God's word. The joy and support which comes from warm Christian fellowship with your brothers and sisters in Christ. The opportunity to share in the worldwide outreach efforts of the Wisconsin Synod and the other agencies that carry out Christ's great commission to go and make disciples of all nations. And not only does the Lord promise to bless you, but you can also bring blessings to your family at Woodlawn as the Lord moves you to be faithful in your worship and communion attendance. To actively pursue your own spiritual growth through many Bible study opportunities and through your own personal study and home devotions. To share your God-given gifts. Be generous with your time, your talents, and your treasure in thanksgiving to God for his goodness. And to remember your family at Woodlawn in your prayers, especially for those among us who are sick, bereaved, or troubled, and to take a keen interest in all the activities and concerns of this, your church, Woodlawn Evangelical Lutheran Church. I ask you then, in the presence of God in this assembly, you pledge to support the mission and ministry of this congregation. If so, please answer by saying, yes, with the help of God. Yes, yes with, with the help of God. And upon this, your promise, we, in the name of this congregation, give you the right hand of fellowship and love. Welcome. 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 And now the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you forever. Go in peace. Congregation, please stand as we continue with the prayer of the church. We include in our special prayers today a prayer for Lupe Sayez, who is at Aurora West Dallas with low oxygen levels. Dear Father, we thank you for preparing the kingdom of heaven for us through your Son, Jesus Christ, and for making us members of the same kingdom through faith in him. What joy, what hope, what peace is ours through Jesus. We know that for his sake you now rule us with your grace, pardoning all our sins, and that you will give us everlasting life in heaven. No longer are we held in the bondage of fear and the power of sin, but trusting in your Son, we're able to live victoriously over sin to the glory of your name. Holy Spirit, continue your work in us that we never lose hold of everlasting life. Led by you instead of by our sinful flesh, may we always seek first the kingdom of heaven, putting your word and the promise of everlasting life it brings ahead of everything. Spirit of God, extend the preaching of the gospel to the entire world so that all may hear the good news that Jesus was born, that he lived and died, and lives again for them. Cause people everywhere to accept the kingdom with repentant and believing hearts. Make each of us able and willing ambassadors of the kingdom, boldly proclaiming salvation in Jesus' name to others. Open our hearts to give generously to the cause of Christian missions, and remember your missionaries in our prayers. Grant to those who labor in the harvest of human souls the privilege of seeing the fruits of their labors. Great physician of soul and body, we pray that you would look with mercy on Lupe Seas, and according to your gracious will, restore her strength. You have given your son to bear our infirmities and sicknesses. Deal compassionately with your servant, 
Bless all the medical means employed on her behalf with your healing power. We commit her to your gracious mercy and protection, for you are a faithful and merciful God. We ask all these things through Jesus Christ, our Savior, and in his name we also pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Continue with the sacrament. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly good and right that we should at all times and in all places give you thanks, O Lord. Holy Father, almighty and everlasting God, through Jesus Christ our Lord, whose way John the Baptist prepared when he called people to repentance and pointed to Jesus as the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. Therefore, with all the saints on earth and hosts of heaven, we praise your holy name and join their glorious song. Holy, holy, holy Lord God of heaven, Heavenly hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he, blessed is he, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Then he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it to them, saying, Drink from it, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, poured out for you for the forgiveness of sins. Do this whenever you drink it, in remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you always.
Now may this true body and blood of our Lord and Savior strengthen you and preserve you in the true faith unto life everlasting. Your sins are forgiven. You have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Please stand for the song of Simeon. Lord, now you let your servant depart in peace according to your word. For my eyes have seen your salvation, which you have prepared before the face of all people. A light to light and the Gentiles and the glory of your people Israel. I'll give thanks to the Lord for he is good. We give thanks, Almighty God, that you have refreshed us with this Holy Supper. We pray that through it you will strengthen our faith in you and increase our love for one another. We ask this in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious unto you. The Lord look on you with favor and give you his peace. Please be seated. It's been great to worship with you today, to rejoice in the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ, the grace of God, and his daily guidance and peace he gives us through the Holy Spirit. We've been having midweek Advent services the last couple weeks. Our third and last one is this coming Wednesday, uh, Wednesday afternoon, 3.30 here at Woodlawn, 6.30 early evening over at Jordan Lutheran on 77th and National. Pastor Knazer is preaching this week. Uh, Next weekend, we have a guest preacher. Mr. Justin Wilkins is a senior at Wisconsin Lutheran Seminary. His wife, Becky, is our first and second grade teacher at Lamb of God School. So he will be sharing God's word in the sermon next weekend here in all services at Woodlawn. Reminder that we've got these Christmas invitation cards for you to share with someone uh, to invite them to Christmas Eve or Christmas Day worship services here at Woodlawn. Uh, They're on the table as you leave today in the entryway. Uh, Feel free to take as many as you think you'll use. Uh, invite people to hear the good news that a Savior was born for them. Members of Woodlawn 2022 offering envelopes, if you use those, they're on the table down the hallway. Please take those with you when you leave today. Also, we've just got a few tags left on the giving tree to support the missionaries. Uh, If you're able to contribute to that cause, uh, please do so. We appreciate all of you who have contributed and the generosity that you've shown to support those who are sharing the good news of the gospel throughout the country and throughout the world. God's blessings to all of you.